It is uh, 6 a.m. on the dot. Welcome to Gusile Breakfast Show. We are live from Babane Hospital Hill, Eswatini TV. A very good morning. Welcome to today's Gusile Breakfast Show. We really appreciate you tuning in once again this morning. I am Sifiso Ngmalo. It is the Tuesday, the 14th of April. An exciting show is ahead of us again today. We have uh, our local economist, Tembingosi Dube, who will join me to unpack the monetary policy statement presented by Central Bank Governor Dr. Philip Nisi last week, uh, which, uh, you know, cited that interest rates have hiked. They are sitting at 7.25 from 6.75, and uh, inflation has increased to 5.7 from uh, 5.3. What does this mean about prime lending rate and what should be expected? What should be expected on costs and, you know, the cost of goods and services. When, what about economic activity? Tembingosi uh, Dube will join us to unpack that. We also have uh, Senator Mangoba Kumal, who is the Commerce, Industry and Trade Minister. I will be talking to him at half past seven about, you know, his tremendous task on making the country an export-led economy. His ambitious investment drive he has been on for the last six months coined the investor vision as well as the sustainable development development goals investor roadmap. Uh, we also talked to him about e-commerce, you know, and all things trade. Um, hopefully we are going to be able to cover everything in the allocated 20 minutes that we are allocated for that segment. We will also have our local and international news as per usual, as well as give you the traffic update. Stay with us. We will take a quick ad break. When we return, we look at our local news. Why should we pay our TV license? The content on our local television is actually more today. The industry is enhanced. It is a criminal offense not to pay your TV license and attracts a fine of 500 emalangini or six months imprisonment. And the industry is definitely blooming, ladies and gentlemen. So that's what we have for you. But we'll be right back just after the break and we'll give you more of Miss V. Pay my TV license. That's why I can enjoy the benefits of an enhanced industry and keep track with recent transformation. Mommy, who pays for TV license and what are they paying for? The owners of TV set and the gadget with a tuner like DVD set have to pay. Pay your TV license at NetBank with the details provided on screen. Or use your cell phone via the mobile money pay. You could also visit your nearest post office and pay there. Pay your TV license via Eswatini Mobile Imali. Any TV device retailer can purchase a license to trade. Pay your TV license and enhance the industry. <coughs> Health and Human Research Review Board. Lelibandla letfulwe yindvuna yetempilo lizingosi ngemsombuluko yokuseni. Lomuhlala 
Sitobega i pot lensha, yel twaning, balegi le siltigole tempilo sing bul mende, wagangwane gusikube kona labo, la babuga la laba twaning a wba dol twaning on lo lubuga wagusi, ba twaning anja nukubanfu, shosemiti mbene banfu, ne wubuga gusi, kuloko gu twaning emti mbene banfu, balanzela no kufanele in guze banfu ba vigelege. This board is coming into place at the very right moment. WHO as an organization is the time when we are promoting local solutions, including local manufacture of medicines, both conventional and the traditional ones. The work of the review board in strengthening research capacity and helping maintain the integrity and quality of all health-related research studies conducted in Eswatini, again, nothing could be more important. In Vonal Tigo, let them a business next to Salana, Mangoba, Kumalo, Kutsata Tin Slang, was let it in Zaga, Gonga Pans while El Tigo, Kutsi Tisanya let it slash like Vigela, Gukutuga, Gwesimo Seltulu. In Vonabe Kuluma, Scolens, the Banvana Labacuba, Degang, a Gunga, Vain, Lebe, and it mats heads, and his cats, Yagal Sanya at Sasa, a Pansy Wem Kanka Solo, so when you sell Tigo, let them veil on twenty twenty. In a cool, Ula Malanga Scupa, Jambe, Lenzaba, forestry. In Vunaibe, say Nigas Tinsego, where goods eat out Kulumisan and eating Shangots let it in the gago, Kupin Segisa, where goods a lessy call was for Latin for let it sing Nago, Quengeta, Gula Matangela Mabili, Lanigel, well, Digo. Seconds of where goods a Batsingara man in the Matang, Navala Mabili, so stout, Tolage, Labang, Navalabanga, a donator, General Capani donating, Sipere Utsma Peralinga, April, Lambe Onkel and Matangel about Singa over the seven now, Mobala Mastens, a corner seven of our kill. The Spilly gave at Singa Pitla Trims, Moba, Uma Bewendega, Lamanti Labana, Mobana, Lamanti Manasa Pela, the Scandi Science Lab. Structural problems. The building I see safe. science laboratories. See, budget. Patwales call wa ukazile we guti ku kona bamvana lese bakoni le kungena yema kolishe. Begunga gasi kwa bana bantu na bangena tertiary institution. And for the very first time, by the minister this year, we have three learners lese bafagi for the very first time in the history of the deaf child. Two of them have gone to one teacher training college. One of them is at Scott pursuing a, a human resource. We are so optimistic as a school, guti we are still going to break emma boundaries and be able to put Labanvana through a tertiary. Eskolas Nebamvana Labangi Dulgue Mashumlas Poshong. Et in Zabente Swatini TV, Ubigan Elsu and Langa Mantang Nambongwa, Dubegu Matseta. Sanya Logesta, Satan and Umbigo, Kamgai, Digo, let them pilo. Tigo let them pilo like this a sieve, a good sister for Lagalain Vota, Lebuya, even Lemos and Beak in a sieve for some share or cholera. And big when you load for your little bit in Zaba in Vonal Tigo, let them pillow is in ghost, the length of sight for Lagales from Zensaga Manzini, the move of a good siltigo, Belisi, Capele, Simo, Lipins, the Lisilla and the Lela. In Vonal's length of a figure spell, the lamb shatting a mushroom lama bill named Fee, Kanyang and the Sons of Pella. The Tigolizi, Lissi Capele, Simo Salen Vots, a Ganzaga Futsi, Ibugaga Lulam, and Jungle Bible Senior Seti Pelle la Taguleli. In Vonal's Tigolia Cobega and Gustapella, the Simo, Ibesa in Vonal Kutsata Sivas and Maswati. 
kwa kutsi shaila inombolo leti 977 nomege siye mi tola mpilo umasnet impa ute kutanda lugu ngemi kanyende mshego lo kubega langa longe lo mshego gengi lo lo hambisana na kutika kwe matfo lo umundu wanga koni kwa amba kanyige na kupele lua ngemanda lo mbigo wenvu na utubega utisive kufanele shaila inombolo leti 977 uma umundu lebega ati ane mshego nome atanda asishia imtlabeni litigo lete mpilo leti Gute gune pe ma tuba ek fola le si fo si vek fane le si tine le zinga le te klobal se tu lo gani ge ne ku sevendi sa tine lo tanga sensa le ti se zinga ni le li kunya tuwa be tempi lo si vek ek fane le skeze tan lo gani muva ku sevendi sa tine lo tanga sensa nanga pambi ku ti nanga pande nanga pambi ku ti nza gula si vek si pinze si ku ti tuwa ku ti si bilise mandi ek na tau manga be si sola ku ti agasobi. Bego ngumbigo gelo kamga iti gole tempi ilo maela na genen vota li kamga even le Mozambique Ese kutwala gele guzi ina sifo se cholera Sikube gene tinza wa bongkose li kube gega selselo lwe gu hole la banfu la bata ala Njalo ge nge nyanga lo sugu nyiswe lho visi lel pinland vuna nkulu nge nyanga nilo vana glom nyaga Lo gu kvetwe ngu mapala nilo mkulu gle lho visi melo suma sugu la puwa kaze kona Kwa guzi bata ukala kola banfu la bata ala mshati si lani ugle se tulu nga pansi gwa lo lselo Sisi kumi sisi umkanga soko kuti sisi sisi hole la boko koko na la baku ba tegi lenjalo nyang sisi utalege umkanga soko nyang ende peli le lugun februari umkanga soko u u u u hambaga ase utalege ase u hambaga ase ni alose sisi nyang ni SB gule nyang nje iite sisi kule March bana ba tala na ba kupatagi le ba tau kona u spite folly mali abonga le start umtaka five basi timi sela na stala lo shelo wuti le pilot ista yenda tini yangu le timbi kungo februari na march so genya lo sisi kuti le lo sisi google april njema basi kulum si yetemba njema wuti si sisi kubega sana pambi le bana ba tala ba tau kona lo wuti imali abo spite folly njalo na kupela inyang Kwa kwa kasi ya kurumi sana, nala bole sbambi sana na bolo kufaya kati ili hovis la hul mende, ili bugeti mali, treasury, nala bo la 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 baspatale la kwa boko kwa kufaya kati bo MTN na suwazi mobile. Ngoba lulusle lulusle nega bili. Kukona laba laba hola nganyanga, laba hola mjalo mshaka 20. So sifiso setfuwe kwa kuti, nagi laba laba hola nga momo, na bo kube nilila nga labo njile lakiti wangu kwa kuti bata uhola na ngabe si timtila wame bata uhola mshaka 25 kube mshaka 25 nje within leo nyanga la sisuge sigi laba hola ago laba tola le mali le bang 77,000 and then laba kubate gile bang pansanya na nje kwa 10,000 angule na ya bani laba kubate gile mtisi le office le lupinu wangu na ngulu si awe loko kuti vele le tinombolo tingani Kutoa ge kulo mnyia gasi bena nchini nchini lengo linga wakuti hulmende usinigi le usfagi le timatana le tita wengine wakuti sisi kwa nguo kuli sali linani. Liti gole tempi lo liti selbona guanza kwa linani le ban vula bat fulaga la nesi fo samala le veva la pa eveni le liti gole tii le bat fulaga la na le si fo ban vula ba shaga ni na la bola ba buya ima veni aboma keloani le liti gole tige seli na gogo tii le ba ni bat fulaga le mbuzloani le banga le si fo ima chatini uma ba vuna insang. Umkomo wa sitatfu wenvutu gole konsa wea mshabshlange ni ukuluma ngegu tiba nvu gufanele babe ni gupi la bapinze bapile. Logu wambisa na ngegu ti wonge wonge noma ngumfundisi nome sikangi alutole lusito na gaya espejela. Kuhambisa na na logu belitigo le tembilo basa ngene sibaye ni loj la po bafunzi suwa gabandi nge sifo samalele veva le sibona gala sanza eveni. Nyagusho kwa liltigo. Banu mbasla le mbasla tsini bali magwai. Bapinza babi nebanu fula baba taza le nga pandi kwe mawe. Mbasla le nabwa le mbasla tsini. Bali wane timbusu wane nga kanyi nabo. Sikasa kufuna nyalo siyate uzila kubo chanwari. Labla labla kubo februari tu maji. Tibese tiye basu tiye timu. Kutu wane le mbasla tsini. Watkamge siba kule nga kuunu mbae tipele la. Kuna nga kwa sisika. Mba kishe tre kota sofu lima peshe nita kwa nila mbala nga. It's my young males. Na basuka ni matlatsi ni. Maswati ni mandukamba. Baiti pelela. 
Litigo liti laba laba funzago, lifuna kutiba hambe bayo funzisa laba anye lapo basebende lakona guze wonge wonge asinze gufeni. Tinzabeni teswa tini TV gubiga temgosi mavimbela kumatapa. Kuskatsanya loge sita utata na umbigo lo kamuga kona e, digo lete mafa. Li digo lete mafa li chige e palamende li singa gawe ndu msebendi walo we kufunzi saati mpunga. Ni msetfo lo funa kutribelu awe tinzabate mtselo lo tatwa emholweni. The Income Tax Amendment Bill of 2022. Lo kubange lwe kutsi timpunga titi gange get kone kubega na lo msetfo. Nge kwe nfuna ya lilitigo no mage mapala ni lo mkulu wa lilitigo. Tisebendi ita lilitigo go kubite kutsi iti chika nenvugu ya mbanga nlala seti ilunge le kutala kusebenda. Timpunga tibe seti salati ngena e kumeni. Noko ke tipume ti sanga gabegi kutsi. Iti kule tema afalta ubuya nini ilta ufunzi sanga lo msetfo lo sakanganyo. Loge begungu mbigo lo kamuga e palamende. Kulis katsanya lo sita ubuga tinzaba le ti kamuga la poco na kukuli na wakuti beti kima mlilo bala pa eveni bata uba ina nye mbugi so beti ti kima mlilo bata uba nje lwa eveni le rasha kulo mbugi so kekta ube kukangi suwa ngekuti kwenti wanjani na kune timo le tputuma kule titinga ti kima mlilo la boge la ba ume lila live la kangwane balbonge le balbonge le le tfuba Invuna eteguwa kane kututugi suwa kwa matolopa umduwa nengosi smelane itfume umpati weti kima mlilo luklu shaba kuti Apati se labo labaya ungenela lombugi iso guti. Sebaya umelela live le swatini kona lapo eveni le rasha labaya kona. Na nhamba, nunga tuti na zensuwa la ansameli ule department ni pela. Futi ansameli le ministri ke paset mwede live. Le si kwa guti nube na kwa nto nveni guti. Ndabe ntanga le labanyi enti. Because kwa mtanga nulo ya. But it's a large scale. It's a large-scale uh, operation, Article 2023. We have to international. We have to do the demonstrations. 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 We Sita ukubega sende, gonge njoba sisi, koni lewe lulewa, naba nilaba zala, sita melela nelive, nganilo nipo, si pinze futi no masibu ya emuva, si ya kolelu wa guti, gonge, le sita kutola, si ta ubu ya nago. Babili, laba ta umelela, live, gulo mbugi iso, ganzi, bapeke guti, babu ya neluati, luluta usita, live, egulwe nini timo le tiputumago. Nzabente Swatini TV, gubiga temgozi mavimbela, mbabani. Bumage la batse ngi saiti mage cheta se madlange mbisi, nga pansu kwenye kundia se madlange mbisi. Babunga baka nga ata kulumende, nga kubakela sa kiwo le sisha se mage cheta. La po bata utse ngi saka ashe, tipit vo tabo. Le sa kiwo sa kiwo ngu micro projects, lo gulu ushla ngo tsulua kulumende. Kanzike le sa kiwo spite ima lese kits, nga nga nye malange ni 1.8 milion. Labomage, apa kukola lo gula ba kubona nge mesh, lo nkulanzi la kukuti, pa funa lo sito le wakelwa leti magete, si katile site. Mwishe ka kukulu, ka kukulu, ka kukulu, ka kukulu, ka kukulu, e, e, kukuya nwa mena lo msebe kumbani. Le, kukule te mpunja le, le la sende la gona, nga nambia nwa mega liana, asisane ka, e, bila nga lia shisa, asisane ka sitete mpunjini. เสียบวงกับคุณก็เสียมีบ้านสบายดีสิเลยภาษาเคลมาเกตเนี่ยเราเซ็นเสียกับคุณเสียบวงกับบ้านมาเอ็กโปรเจกต์เนี่ยโจ
Seya kanga jula pekzeni. Mafru tabo mage saka shala afresh saka sashi sala anga netimpuli atsabi na o saka shala aga shenjo. Kwa sababu kuna 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 Eti inza beni ite swati ntivi, ngpongo smaka kule matlang mpisi. Tinsatfu, tinkele po empaka atuwa galanga, le kusola gala guzi, tine tingwe nya le tikaleke kubona gala nge muva kwe timvula, le bega tetkona eve ni nganyanga en lovana. Daka miti talenzao, titi sete sabela banfana kanyege na mfuyo. Taka miti tenza o ya gmate tanga pansi gwe mpaga atuwa gala langa se iti vaga lise kata tega watu nge tingwe nye lese kale gbo na gala iti ngele peni la baka kona ye manje gula. Le taka miti iti ti ile tingwe nye ati kale gbo na gala nge muva goti mvula lebe gata tikona ewe ni nge nyanga ye nlo vana. Ingo tike fele ngoba le agwe ntula nebandwa na beskola. Tilwa nge nga tibamba fele ngoba yu na yapo umama nge. Yang disebabkan kerana kita tu satu tu sama je segi sesi nasi saya boleh lakukan yang aku pegang ni, nampak saya rasa itu sebenarnya kor. Ingu tu yang mabah nampak lama tengah kamu juga ada seng nanti kumpulan mandi kan sebut sesi agak ada nasi yang bamba. Asal saya kau nguen nguen dah ni kau si lengan yang samba kau jom bukan yang ini selalu. Usi telinga ini selalu sengah hamba kau. Eni saya fuga filega kul kau si asal agus pilih nasi seluar nanti saya kalan juga sebab nak lel dam. Asat lukis tahu sini kalau lu sabela banfan, sabela ti fuyo teh. Mina jengah ketu tega ku, angin ati nomai ati ngelip suhu. Sengi apa nak usung endega, nai ngapi ati ngelip suhu. Ti fuyo tamati ga pepun. Yo, aku ni angguh ni ala. Besolong fangatin zaba, ti punya lay don. Ikon, nanya lo uti leku benju sesile. Ngawi kanzi sebu gulu gulu apa, ni boni le mene. Kuingo tika kulusis, banwa na bala kulenza ulen, bafunza school wa bintu la kulengele pole, tin tri, ti ti tingele pole na letingwe. Gong manje gusete umona galolo, sendi we ngule tingwe ni agansi ge, la ba bugeti lo ane veni, ba tisi we ngalenza ba, ba ti basa kagua guyo tisi ya bese ba tisusa, umbigo usanga ni sweng tembeli sema kuchua guma teta. Li tigole tema biznis ne tseng salana al kutsata ba nfula ba shaguzi pa ksugmele tulu. Ba sungule tin sango tste gonga ne gwe bole gi sango bege le nang lenye tin lela. Le ta wenda gube melula gwe guzi besa ge lega ne timali ma sinyane. Lo gu guve tueng lo buge le tin sanga nuga manzini si pogu nene. Nga skatze ge gu sugu nyi swal shiro le gwe sa ge la ba nfula ba shakute biznis gle nkunda. Eho le ni la seza kele ka manzini. Kutsi ngeka kutsi emalunga alata ukala inchangano abe museven. Kula malunga lang seven. Kuba ba anfula ba patele iti mali ya kuchoyina. Le mali ya kungena inchangano eni. I mali ya mashez. Logu i mali ya bunigati. Me mali ya kukala umsebenti. Bese ege emuwa kwa logo. Seba nga lunga elage labo ba anfula abo kutsi banga palisa inchangano ili bagiswa. Ek palso eni kwa inchangano ili bagiswa. No kwa kala si funal form le apply for kule registration. Le kualiswa nguye lo seven. Bese kuba na list ya malunga. Manga atuona la malunga ale inchangano ni ti mali la ti patel. Lilunga le palamende tandi ngumalo li tiba nfila basha kule nguye. Kunja, pese basa lele emu vaga kulu ego sege luenes kwa Minister Regional Development Fund. Sibambisene na maspala wel dolopa, wea sita ga kulu, maspala wapizwa snika le nyinza ulasta waka dama workshop a youth inayo, lakta upene fita hanja tuwe ban ban, ezi staba faga egu yinyi workshop ngabo 10-10-10. I project ban ban, angula ma workshop, Kusok sikit aku pernah fikir 200 ribuan pan. Nampak apa? Emoneni, kita bang 10 emak workshop, nasi zakeling 10 emak workshop. Besar sekut sih ke guru ne ban pan ale lama school livers. So apa ke guru project yang tinggal? Ya bobo nails and pedicures, nabo facial. Ban fila baca bonya bati lulu sido. Baya luti ngangu beku tega semat hubai ini sebendi. Jangan manji yutin je ay sebendi. Si shota ni msebendi. Kwa shabiri ya siri yuti ya semoni ni kuzi ni hasta wakona usina boshi sanya ama sakra ya mapuzi sana ula mawe kshupa watu waka semoni ni daba tangen. Lizi ngalenga sebendi kwa bamfula ba shaguleli tiku 58.2 percent ngagotin selo le tinge ngaledi tishose kusanga betana na logo.
etinzabe ente swa tin TV kubiga nelsu wenda ngamanda ngambongwa tube gamanzini. Gutemzalo. Bat ke kesi be matem bla matzat fula bonagala se matfuben la mashe kutge anga pagamisa inzewe MTN Premier League alonyaga logongo Ernest Mavuso we Green Mamba manda zamini we yang Buffaloes gani ge na Caleb ungwe nyawe mbaba ne Swallows bat gul kun gushogutsi nguli pilkemble komba gubane manda glenzebe kutwa bona bato sata umja longa muni nga muni gleole sele sakselege mija lo less true pagutsi pele MTN Premier League mnyaga lo se tul. The move of Mjali M10 Primalik Glimbella song will be a guyo, succeeding him Jalu, less it true, Panjik Pela, good since I be M10 Primalik, if he gave my petal in Ayo. A Macam Lamatat for Labonagala Samatuben Lamash, a wee Paramis, a Lenzebe, ye green mamba, the latest Tongweni, young Pafolos, lessons are in his billy, kind number one solos, lessons are in his tatfu. But the Kishwala Macam Lamatatu, who call Nagalabak Shogo, and Matu Balabanao, who let me Jalu, less true Palace. More psychological classes, more uh, recovery and regen uh, sessions, uh, sit balance Because Nyalo, uh, if it's go in the log, the workload is a move, may catch up with us. So, if you see the show, see a game, see a game, see six games, see a game, see a game, game, see a game, Lucky enough for Sakrin, man. Me wrong it, I'm not worried. Sakrin, man. We are still there in this rest. Ule Resley was still there. It's one game at a time. We are going to really concentrate on our next game. And they are coming thick and fast. We, but we are ready for this challenge. We want to push it to a while. Kanzili kumle kirin mambe mjale nuna nzela upe uti tulane ni mbabane solos. Pese guzi, iyang pafalo ziona itulana ni manzinu andraz. Lubigilu msakati swati ntivi kite mizalo nglinda jamini. Mbabane. Si islalo wenchangano lebuge gujalisa umzalo we pola esfunzenza selbo njeni ni kotimas mashwama. Utsiba enchangano geba katsata kbona balanze lbe mzalo we pola bete ge inzao ye kshala. Nkunde nyaka langa estegi. Mashwama utsiba se mkanka suwe nwe kwa kwa inzao lega ase ye kshala. Kulembela somvu, lesbu ya guwe ngu dileni ya galang, mjaleno M10 Primalik ila pokona, bektula ni mbabano soluz gaine yang pafaloz, balanze ili beba bulala inyoga, labe tekta ubugela lo mjalo. Nanu magunjalo uwe balanze ili solo, baye emana babugela imi mjalo, kule ngu unjaba shal pasi njongo baku ute titulo te gushala. Si shalo nishangan ili buge gijali sa mjalo ili pole ili bonje ni kopetimas mashwama uzi, kukona la bago ndago kutama kwa aka inzawe gushala. The last thing we have planned is that we are just combining the two different parts of the world. And the number of things that we need to combine is that we must have more resources in this line that will still provide a clear standing foundation. The number of things that come just now will generate the same job we will have to do again. That's why we are missing a special challenge which is about developing, but we are missing a few more things that we could have done better. FIFA Apa ase kwa lishelo le call project. Lo bigilu msakati swati ntivikte mizalo nglinda jamini. Mbabane. 29 minutes after 6. Sifika ke mapetelwe ni etinza ba tala pae kaya. Sita basola et magete. Sina ka et magete sita utata si mosel tulu. Masbuya, we sit down with the local economist Tembi Ngosi Dube. Just to look at the state of, you know, the the economics. La pae vein, the financial state, the monetary policy statement that was published by the central bank governor. Evigindel Pelile. Don't go away.
your TV license quickly and easily with MTN Momo. Simply dial star 007 star 3 hash and select option 8 for TV license. Enter your national ID number as your reference and the amount you wish to pay. Then enter your PIN to confirm your payment. Once your payment has been made, you will receive a confirmation SMS of your payment. If you're a first-time payer, you get another SMS for your TV license. So legalize your entertainment from the comfort of your home. Pay your TV license the easy and convenient way with MTN Momo. Everywhere you go, MTN. I do the most. Watch local TV on the go with the Eswatini TV app for only 20 Malangi. Come on. Do the most with Eswatini TV app. Download from Google Play Store or App Store. We're good together. Everywhere you go, MTN. Thirty-three minutes after six. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. We will have our local economist, Mr. Tembingosi Dube, go see Panja sit for him. What is the economic outlook of Eswatini currently following Gutsi? There is a risk of a global recession and uh, simultaneous rate hikes continues to rise. See, Bonilla Gelo Gutsi go confirm Abaga World Bank, Laba highlight an urgent need for policies to curb inflation without exacerbating a recession. The Kingdom of Eswatini has not been spared from these effects of this global recession. Now, they're taking into consideration relevant global, regional, and domestic economic factors. The Central Bank of Eswatini has made some decisions guided by the price and financial stability mandate. Evigin Lel Pelilenje, Central Bank Governor Dogotela Philip Nisi, we call Kile in monetary policy statement. Lebege Nemanyu developments that were met with Dube, that were met with a reaction, Yesive, Gukala, just like our neighboring countries as well as the whole club. So long as Kala every month with every update. See Kala. Very good morning, Nyamatane. Morning. Morning. To everyone. Mm. Yeah, to you economists as well. Just give me the economic outlook of the country right now. Okay, uh, maybe even before we, we get to the country, mm. I think we should start globally. See, and why so much the increase in my interest rates? The first principle is just one principle layer adopted by economists. It's based on a very fundamental principle they call it the Phillips curve. If there is high unemployment, the level of inflation will be low. Mm. And if the inflation is high, the level of unemployment will be high. It's a very, very old policy. I think it was established in 1970, after 72, 73, after the, the fall of the Bretton Woods system. So, we have to say that we have to say that we have to say that we have to say inflation is not the understanding is as guta wasla e consumer spending. It based actually the more people spend, it's because they have more money in their pockets. That's the basic principle. So globally what has happened after COVID nineteen? Because gutale go COVID nineteen, you inflation be kupuka, but be say ibaga kutwan after the time. So quasi after COVID nineteen they destabilize everything in terms of supply chain, production, and all those things. Wakanza go good see, now parallel COVID, so we are not going to go to the end. Now we are going to Russia, and we are going to go to Ukraine. So inflation is going to go. So they have been increasing the interest rate as a monetary policy, a tool that we are going to 
to balance the economy ito correct mm. which njengoba ungiva ngikhuluma nawo ngicaba so so ngiyanalyze nawo ukuthi lo lokwentekako the the policy lesejenisiwangamaglobalcentralbanks.isnotrelevantbecausethepolicyisyouincreasetheinterestrateifthereisexcessmoneyinthemarket.inthehandsofthepeople.butthisisnotthecase.there'sno'excessmoney.there's
but if you are not, maybe go yaku sita na ngaba upila nje unge na wala malons na lo bolega pa. But gulo bolega ago, bolega skole tu kshai lo 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 wat understand ago lo in trouble interest rate, bolega pa ngi, bolega credit card. Yeah. All those things are linked. Bolega ngi shona stolo whatever. As in do not turn on the credit, they are linked to this interest rate, so it affects you. Go yaku tulela. So you should understand what it means. Na kuri yangu alitini zavale. Tisa singa buya ge, e gumbe ngudi geltuba. I think you've made the definition. Yeah, you've you've pretty much laid the foundation. Ni funa sibuya lega ngane ku Phillips curve lolo mentioni le as 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 a basic principle of of economics. You said high unemployment reflects inflation is going to be low. Did you say that? It's 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 inversely related with interest rate. Okay. Yes. They they link. Sorry. It's unemployment and now some pamba this station. It's unemployment and inflation. Mm. It's the inversely relation. If the, infl the inflation rate is high, the understanding is uh, unemployment is low. If the unemployment is high, the understanding inflation is low. Mm. Mm. So, does this mean that if if we can, because I'm happy that today we will have the the commerce uh, minister, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he's been talking about driving an export led e e economy, a private sector led, sorry, private mm -hmm. sector led economy. And uh, one of the things that you know he he loves to cite with regards to that is that it's going to create a lot of jobs, citing that uh, you know the jobs that government can offer can only be so much, and so mm -hmm. we need mm -hmm. a, a new job opportunities. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you see that helping this kind of situation? Uh, job it, creation. Job creation is a good move, but I don't see it uh, curbing inflation. Not in I don't anyway. see it curbing inflation in, in any way. Mm. Because I don't know of the uh, correlation between the two, Gugutsi is strong and Ganan. Uh, but I, I don't see it going to inflation because, as I said, the, the cause of this inflation is not a normal one. Yeah, but it is mm. driven by uh, a good effect as a shortage of our commodities after e e COVID-19. COVID so, the war. You, yeah. yeah, the war. So, it has been a result of that. So, <laughs> in, in, in increasing whatever in terms of employment is good, people get jobs and they work and they have more money they might also f uh, further fuel the inflation. So we are hoping at some point in time things will stabilize yeah. and we, we get an even equilibrium point uh, because the global market will, will, will eventually do that. But in Gula Malang, I would say a very good condition because if, if you had a loan of a house, I was talking to one of our friends who have been with in the financial markets. Mm. He said, when I started paying my mortgage, it was about 17,000 per month, mm. but now I'm paying 20. So if, if you're talking of a difference of 3,000, only in one loan, which is the mortgage, mm. you haven't talked about the food. We haven't talked about the increase of the energy. Let's say, Boni Lenji, Nakukala, Dinyem Kibet. That's another effect. So basically, what is left in your pocket, Segumati, and the people who rely on a salary, Mm. I don't want to lie. It depends on the volume and the size of the salary, but they are feeling the pinch. But even if normal we hold about two hundred thousand per month, the difference you feel now. Yeah, mm. it is. It is interesting. I want us to reflect on the post-budget seminar. I'm sure you were following that. It happened about a week ago. Some of the sentiments shared by Economics Association of Eswatini's president, Professor Mike Matsavula. Mm. He, he highlighted that uh, his organization is proposing a framework. He, he said it has three dimensions. The first one is a five-year research program, which was uh, discussed and formally adopted by his organization stakeholders from all the pertinent sectors of the economy in Eswatini. Secondly, the adoption was, you know, the corresponding work program. And unfortunately, he did mention that that, that, that development was stalled by the advent of COVID-19, as you've mentioned, that it has had some, you know, turbulent effects. But the last one, which I, which I liked, he said that the review and prioritization of research areas to be with the eradication of poverty, mm -hmm. unemployment, in, and in inequities. Um, do you see a, a, an approach that is, you know, possibly going to solve this economic situation? It's a good approach. I believe the school of thought is, is the right one. 
It will help the economy because what is important is that people will be able to make ends meet. So if you have a model and a framework that is going to improve the, the, the living condition for mm. the people, that is a very, very good model. Yeah. As long as it is going to be implemented fairly. Unfortunately, you can never separate all these frameworks with politics. Yeah. Unfortunately, economics works very, very closely with economics. So they have to merge with the politicians to discuss the way forward that will work. Because you can come up with a policy framework, very intelligent, yeah. and good policy. But if the people who are implementers, who are responsible for policy in the country, do not get or understand whatever is happening, it, um, it comes to a halt. But mm. they let them finish whatever they are writing and they bring these ones on board. And I think the, the government and the economists will give a very, very good economy. Policy. Yeah, I think you're, you're nailing it there because it, it, within the, the post-budget seminar, when uh, Dr. Philip Nisi was, was, was present, presenting his speech, I think the one thing that he was reiterating is their commit, commitment in working with government. Mm -hmm. And he did mention, I think, I, I wrote it somewhere here, he, he said, um, yeah, Dr. Philip Nisi assured Honorable Minister Neil Reichenberg that as part of the bank's advisory responsibility to government, the central bank is ready to give support and advice to the Ministry of Finance. I think, yes. he, yeah, just policymakers working with them is very mm -hmm. critical. But you saying that uh, Professor Mike Matsebula's approach, or rather framework, is a good one. You, you like their, their school of thought. Yes. You had mentioned earlier that you are not really a fan of the approach that is being taken with regards to, to, to monetary policy statements mm -hmm. or just how they are responding to the financial crisis that's happening globally and that affects us. Um, would you propose, what would you propose <laughs> really? Uh, because I, we, we had this conversation when I yeah. heard you uh, yeah. here the last mm -hmm. time. What do you reckon should be done? Yeah, it's a very tough one. We are cutting the interest rates. If we're cutting interest rates, what we will do, it will put money back into our pockets as individuals. We'll be able to have money, mm. and then we'll be able to live. I'm looking at it from the perspective of, the, of a consumer. Yes. It, it will also make it as Google as invest because if interest rates are low, Gulula go loan, Usunga Tatale loan, you start a capital project or you start a business. Yeah. That will fuel the level of unemployment to go with the mm. Because now I can't take a loan to go and buy a camera because uh. but if the, the, the cost of buying the loan is, is low, I will buy a camera and start to work. Yeah. So yeah. My, my my view will be to cut the interest rate. Gutam sit moon Goes a corner go pillar, a seven credit card, yake, at saying a tin for the D, corner with impulate to bed because the inflation is high. Yeah, the only thing that clash a corner of my policy is that the belief economist theory is if you put more money in the pockets of the people, it further in fuels the inflation. So the understanding is that if they will be hyper, hyper inflation, inflation, which is uh, uh, unfortunate. But the gun as you it will also simulate so no banyalo. Eh, I If we default on loans, just destabilize even the financial sector, which makes money through loans. And if people don't take loans, our brothers and sisters who are employed by banks, yeah, they will go home again. Now, yeah, if fund the employment, yeah, it could be unemployment. Yeah, like you're saying, Latin was at Pins at the Clash at Dot Vanyalo. Mm -hmm. And I think to your point, uh, Minister Reichenberg in the post budget seminar sites, we within the medium term framework that they, they, they want to implement now, they want to, to, to take their country's economy from an unsustainable path to a sustainable path. And I think what you're proposing that we, 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 we might we, 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 we adopt Ukraine's approach in terms of, you know, you, you've made this clear example and I think it's a very good example that if I can't buy something that I will come back and make a business with mm -hmm. and you know further break even mm -hmm. and hopefully create job opportunities I think that's sustainable yeah uh, and right now we are on this unsustainable path and I think like you said we have a lot to learn from what Ukraine is doing mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we should watch and see what unfolds or we should adopt it right now 
uh, still, still, still early to adopt. I think it's a wait and see uh, situation because uh, economists they have a very, very uh, different view. That's why I argue sometimes I'm not that much of an economist because <laughs> they, yeah. they, they work on cycles. Yeah. Uh, for them to make a decision, it turns like 1975. And 1980, this is what happened. 1985, this is what happened. That's a cake. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's, but dated, but that's how we work. But if you're talking of a financial analyst, you just take you, tell you, last, last week it was this, uh, this, yesterday it was this, and, this and tomorrow this is what I'm expecting yeah. based on these figures. These are my indicators. That is where I'm going. So I think the, the, the global economy has to adopt a different approach in terms of this thing here, interest rate. Say yes, it matter, and it's a way of and it is now bringing the economy, you say, it's kind of sluggish because mm. people no longer cannot afford. Hmm. Mr. Tube, thank you so much. Always a pleasure having you here to, 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 to get your insights. Uh, hopefully, the next time, we will talk about the number of 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 the number Thank you so much, Mr. Tube. Thank Otherwise, uh, Temming Gossi Tube, our local economist, with uh, you know a few recommendations here and there. It's a wait and see situation for us to adopt uh, Ukraine's approach yet. Let's uh, watch and learn from what is going to unfold in Ukraine. And at the same time, it's saying that the global economy should look at adopting a new approach because this one is not working. We are currently in a Swatini, as presented by the Monetary Policy Statement uh, through Dr. Philip Nisi last week, uh, at 7.25 uh, interest rate from 6.75, inflation increased to 5.7 from 5.3. Not looking good at all. Hopefully, Wagabuya, Mr. Dube, things will be much better and we'll have good news for Emma Swati. 53 minutes after 6, as well as the Masibuya, see do you remember the spinning thing? This is us. This picture represents what we did. We were there when coronavirus wreaked havoc in our population. Together with other stakeholders, we formed the first line controlling the spread of the unknown and unseen enemy of the people. Anxious ourselves, we collected dead bodies countrywide at the time when no one wanted to come near dead bodies of loved ones. We did care for our citizens. Thank you, the people of Eswatini and teams of first responders. Just uh, five minutes before 7 a.m. this morning, Skatsanyaloge, we take our traffic update from Sergeant Begumuzi Gule, Lossi Panjo, Simo Semkwa, Togutsi, Simeganjani, Ila Paeveni, following Livi, Gilespuya, Gulule, Timvula, La Pokona, Bebasiala, Gakul, Gutsi, Skape, Lengabege, this week, Guhamba Ganjani, especially Lomu, Lama Kobane, thank you so much, Lama Kutsi, Unazi, El Selweni, Lengabe, Simeganjani, Simem Kwa, good morning. Angu vusele mguni, vusele mbuge lwa lulchelo. Sivuga na mosha, imi kwa kwa yetu, inglewele hambega hako, kulanza lako kuti, ito lo spena tuti mvudlana la pana lapa, na mshake kwa kanya na mguu, ayikuwe tinda wale tipageme. Lesu nga pukizele la jangiko kuti, umtamu wetu motolo, upageme nyalo eksene mkwa kwa 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 Again, the screen says that we see Tim Powell, Tim Quarto, Tim Petty, Tim Quarto. We are going to learn the language. We are going to be able to appeal. 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 What is the good thing? The banner is the same as the school, and the school is the same as the school. The banner 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 is the
ematuba sisa sonze la hule yon kwa na leyo kante mkwa kwenye uchilo mkulu lo suga yeke nila sengwe nya upewe kona la paenda sik matapa wea hambega so loge ikona ikuling station la pae tule nsabe ene mangwa neni na utapta la yonayin taba ya kwa lakwa ne tingona ge li tingulu timile tisese umzila longa sengwele bese kutike tinele senzilago sao sebendi sa umzila longa segula siya kutatwa kakulu kutilitubane asilino tise ule yon kwa na leyo kuma tapa ka manzini kanjalo na la pae nsanga no isebenda ka ashe tibane tetu li singa kukuzele na jeka kulu be kuna ene siya tiko kutitibane di hanjiswa nguye pela kezi piende ka ahambe na tigambile tibane siya kela kutisi singa sebendisi e manja e kusebende e noma ke wenzudeni kuma sanga na njela kepa ke asi sebendisi e pela kubona ne kushayla nge simo les kona si kumbu ule kukuti la putibane tinga sa sebendi kona si fanele kuniketa na wana ema tfuba loyo mkwa ka ube i three way stop noma ke ube i four way stop au ube kunene ya tuzelela kakulu au kuhambe egi ingesi katu kuhambe tiba nete mkwako ika kulu katila paenda atika manzi ni nazarini la pospona kuona basha eli basha ela nge manla aga tingege manla mkwako eni kepa kutingega emeto kutingega kunagana kusha ela kukunagana ngulo kutia usenda kukuti sendu lengi tindela leti ya ubangu leto leti tepila si tuwe kegebe kunene si tapele leti ngoma mkwako eni si nage mapotolu si joko bae mkwato le minyengi ibona gana kutu au solo ayikwe smele skate ngato timvula leti solo tikona eveni meto etu ke agabe ngila kalpile kukenza yona indena si ya naga kikuti kene mtamo jongo boso uvetile uya paga ama eme kwa kwenye kulanze la kutu bakona lese bafele bakta lile bafagashe la lona laga ngwana si nage enge kutu pekunene baya uchiga bangla wala bapepile nge kutu kese lanze le imitefe eme kwa kwa na toge timpa ute mkwa kwa siya bonga mkwa ni simfisele sebenda logushe sive sema suwa tutisu kule kula lila logushe kele ya ulani siya bonga Makobane, sebo akulu, makobane, just giving us traffic update for Tseni. Zemeganja, ni simu, mikuwa kweni, la paeve, ni still, you know, inzaba, ya mapoto, solo inzaba, la vaikuzele la, kutimbu la, solo dia ili mata, ya mikuwa kwa. So, kege, ngalao makama, ba kubega ba, kuzele la, ba shayel betmoto, ba kubega betmoto, kutiba kapele, mikuwa kweni. Two minutes, in fact, a minute before seven, so, batlo let maga, Thomas Buya, sibuga ima international news. Seven a.m. on the dot. Let's look at our international news. Former Kosovo President Hashim Tachi has pleaded not guilty to ten charges of war crimes and crimes against humanity as his trial opened at a special court in The Hague. Allegations of persecution, murder, torture, and forced disappearance of people stem from the 1998 to 1999 insurgency that eventually brought independence from Serbia and made him a hero among compatriots. France 24's Clemens Waller tells us more about Tachi and how the, the, you know, he remains a hero to many in Kosovo. Thousands gathered in the streets of Pristina on Sunday in solidarity with their national heroes. Brandishing signs calling for justice, protesters rallied to show support for former President Hashim Tachi and three associates before the start of their war crimes trial on Monday in The Hague. That she is accused of murder, torture and enforced disappearances of some 500 people during the 1998-1999 Kosovo War with Serbia. The victims are believed to be mostly Serbs and Roma along with ethnic Albanian political opponents. Accusations his supporters categorically deny. I want to say some words. Who did genocide in Kosovo? 
Serbians, Serbians did the allies. We didn't do genocide. Serbians did genocide. Serbians killed women and children. However, for the families of the missing, this trial is seen as a chance for closure. We expect them to be convicted, not only Hashim Thatchi, but all of those who were directly involved. Ease the pain of all the families who experienced tragedies. Following the war, Thatchi dived into politics and saw his popularity soar when he helped oversee Kosovo's independence from Serbia in 2008. He resigned from the presidency in 2020 after being indicted by the Kosovo Special Chambers and was transferred to the Netherlands for trial, where he pleaded not guilty. The court was established in The Hague in 2015 by the Parliament of Kosovo after a 2010 Council of Europe report linked Thatchi to organized crime during and after the war. However, it is deeply unpopular in Kosovo, with many ethnic Albanians seeing the court as targeting heroes of the war against Serbia. The trial is expected to last years, with over 300 witnesses set to testify. Forty-three years later, the lone suspect in the 1980 bombing of a Paris synagogue is going on trial. A Lebanese-Canadian academic named Hassan Dan stands accused of the attack, but he lives in Ottawa and will be tried in absentia. Visuals may be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. On October 3rd, 1980, a bomb blew up outside a synagogue on Copernic Street in Paris. We saw the flames and I ran over to look. The door had blown open. And that's when I saw the body of the poor boy, Philippe Buissou, torn to bits. Four people were killed in the attack. Dozens were wounded. Police found the motorcycle where the terrorists hid the bomb. They tracked down the shop where it was bought. Then the hotel where the suspect who bought it had stayed. This is a police sketch of the man witnesses described. Security services identified the group behind the attack as the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine Special Operations Unit. Months later, a leading commander of that group was arrested in Italy with several passports, including this one, belonging to a Lebanese man, Hassan Diab, used to enter Europe a few days before the attack but Italian services did not inform French intelligence. It's only in 2008 that Hassan Diab, now living in Canada, was arrested and extradited to France six years later. He swears he has no link to the attack and says his passport had been stolen. It's like a continuous nightmare. You don't know whether you will wake up one day out of this whole process or not. A few years after Hassan Diab's extradition, new witnesses emerged, testifying they had seen the suspect in Lebanon at the time of the attack. New judges dismissed the charges and the suspect returned to Canada. But again, a higher court reversed that decision too, ordering a trial which starts today. What's going on? What's the update uh, between the Ukraine and Russia war? Ukraine has said on Monday that Russian forces were very far from capturing the eastern town of Bakhmut and that fighting raged around the city administration building where the Wagner mercenary group claimed to have raised the Russian flag. Bakhmut is Ukrainian and they have not captured anything and are very far from doing that to put it mildly. That was what they were saying. Sarai Shevereti spoke person for the Eastern Military Command told Reuters by telephone. In the middle of the night, the head of Russia's Wagner mercenary group appears in this video. He claims legal control of Bakhmut after months of bitter, bloody fighting. The city's administration building is behind me. This is a Russian flag. Legally, Bakhmut is ours, but the enemy remains in the western districts. Ukraine insists its army still holds the city. The Ministry of Defense said on Sunday that Russian forces were still assaulting Bakhmut, but that Ukrainian troops were repelling wave after wave of enemy attack. In a video addressed to the nation on Sunday, Ukraine's president thanked the country's armed forces for holding out against Russian assaults. I'm grateful to our warriors who are fighting near Avdivka, Marienka, 
near Bakhmut, especially Bakhmut. It's been very tough there today. The more that everyone is resilient, the more Ukraine is resilient. By helping those near you, you help the whole of Ukraine. Thousands of Ukrainian and Russian troops have died in ruthless fighting for control of the city. Although analysts say Bakhmut has little strategic value, Russia hopes to use it as a stepping stone on the way to capturing more important towns, like Kramatorsk and Slovyansk. As for Ukraine, it sees the city as a drain on Russian manpower and a symbolic prize for as long as it holds out. For more on the war, Russia accuses Ukraine of masterminding the murder of a prominent war blogger, Vladimir Tatarsky, whose real name was Maxim Foreman, blown up by a figurine handed to him during a talk in a St. Petersburg cafe. In a police video, a 26-year-old Russian woman admitted to handing him the bomb, but reportedly said it was a setup. This 26-year-old woman is who Russian authorities claim is responsible for killing a Russian military blogger in St. Petersburg on Sunday. On a video released by Russia's Interior Ministry, anti-war protester Daria Tripova is asked whether she understands why she's been detained. I do, she replies. According to Russian authorities, she has admitted to bringing a statuette that exploded at the scene. Military blogger Vladin Tatarsky was killed after being handed a gift statuette that contained an explosive device at an event in a cafe he was speaking at. This footage shows the moment of the blast, which also injured more than 30 others who were attending the event. Tatarsky was originally from Ukraine's Donetsk region. He joined pro-Russian forces in 2014 and has been a vocal supporter of Russia's war in Ukraine, reporting from the front line to over half a million followers. Russia says Daria Tropova worked with Ukrainian special services and associates of jailed opposition leader Alexei Navalny. There is information based off the statement from the National Anti-Terrorist Committee that the Ukrainian special services may be involved in the planning of this terrorist attack. Naturally, this is a terrorist attack. Ukraine hasn't had much to say about the attack, but has blamed it on domestic terrorism. As for the suspect, her husband has told an independent Russian publication he thinks Tripova was set up. So you're now for more stories on tensions, with tensions between the United States and China on the rise. How are people in other countries viewing what's been dubbed a new Cold War? Let's take a look. When given a choice between the major world powers of US and China, most citizens of the 10 countries that make up the Associations of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, prefer the U.S. Increased U.S. engagement in the regions is behind this shift, say researchers at the Singapore-based ISEAS Yusuf Isaac Institute. Uh, in the last year, the Biden administration appointed an ambassador to ASEAN, so that is one level of commitment that makes him quite appreciated in ASEAN. Then last year, the U.S. also launched IPEF. IPEF gave hope to ASEAN countries that the U.S. is back. The U.S. launched the IPEF, short for the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity, in May 2022, not long after the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership favored by China went into effect. In its poll on the state of Southeast Asia released in February, the ISEAS Yusuf Isaac Institute found that of more than 1,300 respondents, 61% preferred the U.S. to China, while 38.9% preferred China. The previous year, the U.S. had a smaller lead at 57% compared with China 43%. Negative sentiment toward China was higher in countries with which it is engaged in territorial disputes. This can be seen in Vietnam and the Philippines. If they are asked to choose between the U.S. or China, these two countries will definitely choose the U.S. because these two countries have the most intense disputes in the South China Sea against China. However, in ASEAN's Muslim-majority countries, Malaysia, Brunei, and Indonesia, China has the lead. It's because ASEAN's Muslim countries still harbor negative sentiments towards the U.S., which is seen as still on Israel's side in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. But even in those countries, unease about China lingers, especially on security issues. 
and respondents didn't favor siding with China at the expense of relation with the U.S., says Siska Prabawaning Tias, an analyst at Paramadina University in Jakarta, Indonesia. Indonesia should not get carried away with concerns like, if we decided to cooperate with China, it means we are part of their gang. That's not the way to think. We are working with China because of we have common interests. Beside the U.S. and China rivalry, this year's ISEA Yusuf Isak Institute survey also measures Southeast Asians' view on the Russian invasions of Ukraine, which most respondents condemn. Ahadian Utama, VOA News, Jakarta, Indonesia. Taiwan President Tsai Ing-wen is in Central America for talks in Guatemala and Belize, trying to show up alliances just over a week after Honduras decided to end relations with Taipei and establish them with China. Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen toured a hospital built in Guatemala with Taipei's help and in remarks emphasized the ties between Taiwan and the Central American country in areas such as health, economy and trade. She also thanked Guatemala for its support during increasing tensions with China. Last year, when we experienced China's military maneuvers, Guatemala immediately defended justice for Taiwan. In all international instances, President Giamatte supports Taiwan's international participation. Tsai also announced that both countries had signed a cooperation agreement that will expedite donations and aid from Taipei to Guatemala City. Guatemalan President Alejandro Jaimate said the friendship between Guatemala and Taiwan was unbreakable. For Guatemala, this is a very significant visit to renew and reaffirm the total support of the Republic of China Taiwan, reiterating the recognition of Taiwan as an independent nation and as the only and true China with which democratic democratic values are shared, of mutual respect, and historical bonds of brotherhood. Guatemala and Belize are the last two countries in Central America who maintain relations with Taiwan. El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Honduras ended diplomatic ties with Taiwan in 2018, 2021, and 2023, respectively. It was obvious that the president traveled to Guatemala to strengthen relations. It's a win-win situation for Taiwan and Guatemala. Taiwan needs to keep the support of those 12 countries in the region. And for Guatemala, it is important to keep the assistance Taiwan has provided in many activities and investments. Since opening its doors in February, the $22 million hospital in southwestern Guatemala has helped increase the number of patients treated. This hospital in Chamaltenango is the result of the economic and technical cooperation of Taiwan, of its government, which accompanied all phases of construction. Taiwan now has 13 formal diplomatic allies, half of which are small countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. For Eugenia Sagastume in Guatemala City, Guatemala, Cristina Caicedo Smith, VOA News. On Sunday, the 2nd of April, Parisians voted in a referendum to ban e-scooters from the capital streets by an overwhelming majority. Turnout for the consultation, however, was estimated at less than 8 percent. Paris's mayor, Anne Hidalgo, said she would enforce the result. Let's take a look. They appear popular with tourists and locals alike. But on Sunday, Parisians voted on whether to ban electric scooters from the capital streets, with around 90 percent deeming them too dangerous or untidy to stay in circulation, although turnout was under 8 percent. People park anywhere, cross the road anywhere, they drive dangerously. It's a shame, but there would be less anarchy and it would be livable again. Even when you're on a bike, you get bothered by the scooters, but it's still a shame. But for some locals, these two-wheeled contraptions have become a popular alternative to taking the metro or the car. The only way for me to see my grandchildren who live on the other side of Paris is for them to be able to go on scooters, because metros and buses often don't work. On normal days, it takes 45 minutes to an hour. On a scooter, it takes 25 minutes. 
Rentable scooters first hit Paris's streets in 2018, and their numbers have exploded. Around 15,000 are now littered around the city, with each one being used an average three and a half times a day. That's the highest of any city in Europe. But faced with a multitude of deaths and accidents and a mess of scooters being abandoned wherever the user wanted, Paris's council cracked down. Just three companies were given licenses to operate, with each scooter having to be parked in a designated spot. Rental companies have backed tougher measures but say they're being singled out. Sunday's referendum was non-binding, but Paris's mayor, Anne Hidalgo, has said she would enforce its result. The city's contract with the three scooter operators expires on September the 1st. Three U.S. astronauts and one Canadian astronaut are slated to make history in NASA's upcoming Artemis II mission. It's been more than a half century since astronauts journeyed to the moon. Well, folks, that's about to change. Standing in Houston, Texas, before the current astronaut corps and veterans of the Apollo and Space Shuttle programs, NASA Administrator Bill Nelson introduced the four-member crew of Artemis II, Christina Cook, Victor Glover, Reed Wiseman, and Canadian Jeremy Hansen. This is humanity's crew. Reed Wiseman is mission commander for Artemis II, while Christina Cook and Jeremy Hansen will serve as mission specialists. Cook is set to make history as the first woman on a lunar mission, and Hansen as the first international astronaut to take such a journey, something NASA Administrator Nelson emphasized during the announcement. We choose to go back to the moon and then on to Mars, and we're going to do it together. Because in the 21st century, NASA explores the cosmos with international partners. Victor Glover, a U.S. naval aviator, will pilot the Orion spacecraft on the 10-day round-trip mission around the moon, testing the functions of the systems and equipment that future crews will use to eventually return to the lunar surface. In an interview with VOA before last year's Artemis I mission, Glover said he embraces the historic opportunity to be the first person of color assigned to a moon mission. People keep asking me, you know, is it meaningful to you that little black kids look up to you and, and say they want to be like you? You know what, let's be honest, I represent America. I'm a naval officer and I work for NASA. I represent America and little white kids, little Mexican kids, little Hispanic kids, little Iranian kids uh, follow what we're doing because this is maybe one of the most recognizable symbols in the universe. Not only is the makeup historic, the crew of Artemis II could also venture farther in space than any humans before them, traveling over 1 million total kilometers in a path that extends well beyond the moon before returning back to Earth. NASA says the exact distance and plan depends on a number of factors, including the date of the actual mission launch. At the end of the NASA ceremony introducing his crew, Reed Wiseman expressed the determination of the agency to further its goals in space despite repeated delays and cost overruns. Three words that we keep saying in this Artemis program. We are going, and I want everybody to say it on three. One, two, three. We are going! NASA hopes to launch Artemis II as early as November 2024, with the first mission to the lunar surface as early as 2025. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Chicago. More than 10 years after South Sudan split from Sudan, as many as 1.2 million ethnic South, South Sudanese could be living in Sudan without citizenship for either country, the United Nations Refugee Agency says. Bachir, who declined to give his family name for fear of reprisals from the state, drives a tuk-tuk or motorised rickshaw in Khartoum. He's 19 and says he would rather be studying at college, but because he does not have Sudanese citizenship, he cannot. I studied up to the third year of high school, but I don't have legal documents to apply to college, so I tried to get a job until I get the required documents. There is no job or future for someone who only has a high school diploma. I cannot fix this. Bachir is one of many ethnic South Sudanese who've been unable to obtain citizenship or identity documents in Sudan since 2011 when South Sudan gained independence. UNHCR says as many as 1.2 million ethnic South Sudanese in Sudan could be in similar situations. 
a law designed to naturalise people after the 2011 partition, has never been fully ratified, creating a legal limbo for those who have no connection to South Sudan, other than being seen as ethnically South Sudanese by the Sudan government. Ibrahim Almaz Deng came from what is now South Sudan to live in Khartoum when he was a child. I'm sick, as you can see. I'm getting treated, but I'm disconnected from the outside world. Doctors advised me to travel abroad to be treated, but how? My brother submitted the papers and security approved them, the Interior Ministry too, but the presidency still hasn't accepted them. It's been eight months now. Mahdi Madani is the president of the Southern Sudan Migrants and Returnees Organization, an advocacy group set up to help the undocumented. The current government has done nothing because everything comes back to the law which says references are needed to get nationality. So this is a really difficult situation for the returnees from the south. Unless an undocumented person provides the names of Sudanese citizens who can vouch they've lived in Sudan for a certain number of years, they are unable to obtain identity documents. Madani says his organisation has only been able to help around 6,000 people obtain citizenship. UNHCR says the situation is legally complex and hard to define because it comes down to which country people feel an emotional connection to. They told VOA that many of the undocumented have been offered refugee status in Sudan, but have refused it because it comes with stigma and does not allow them to work. The UNHCR representative for Sudan, Axel Biskop, says the solution should be about how the undocumented can be more included in the society as such in order for the state of Sudan to actually also benefit from this uh, large amount of people who are uh, yet to be defined if they are Sudanese or not. He added that one solution could be a free movement of labour agreement in East Africa, as exists within West Africa's political bloc, ECOWAS. But that could take years, and for people like Bechir, it may be too late to fulfil his ambitions at college. Henry Wilkins for VOA News, Khartoum, Sudan. For more stories coming from Africa, Zimbabweans in the agriculture sector are dealing with rising fertilizer costs and poor rainfalls due to climate change. Now some are turning to organic farming and conservation agriculture to make ends meet, and officials say they are making progress against the odds. Let's take a look. Zimbabwe farmer Nelson Mudzingwa says he hasn't used non-organic fertilizers for his trees and plants for 10 years. Instead, he depends on animal manure and dead leaves to fertilize the soil for his crops and fruit trees. He says sustainable farming that works with nature, known as agroecology, is cheaper and that's not all. We need to save our soils. The soils are very important for us because they produce food for us. And they must be fed and they must continue to live, not to die as a result of our intervention. We will not need to poison ourselves. We would want to feed ourselves with organic material that we collect from our farms. In this dry area, Mudzingwa harvests hay to ensure he has enough water for his plants and animals. Joseph Mandinyenya is an agroecology specialist with the non-profit development group voluntary service overseas. He has trained about 400 farmers in agroecology as the threat of climate change grows. It can be actually climate proof uh, the, the negative effects of uh, climate change. Also the agroecology produces health food and it also makes use of the naturally available resources that are within the farmers proximity. Zimbabwe's government hopes agroecology soon moves to other dry areas to ensure food security in those households. Godfrey Chipinda is chief economist in Zimbabwe's Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water, Climate and Rural Development.
it also in support um, with uh, the program that we are implementing as government, which is our conservation agriculture uh, from Vudza in Tuasa. Uh, and I think uh, it comes at the right time where we are preaching a message as a government that uh, we need to re restore our ecosystem. We need to test our soil. We need to make sure that everything that we do is uh, agroecology. Officials say the sustainable farming plan called the Pumvuza Inkwasa program can help Zimbabwe withstand the effects of climate change like drought. And with the high cost of fertilizers and irrigation, the government is pushing for more Zimbabweans to use agroeconomy to ensure they have enough food in the future. Columbus Mavungam for VOA News, Mashava, Zimbabwe. 27 minutes after 7 with that story about Zimbabwean farmers turning to conservation agriculture. We mark the end of our international news. We go now for an ad break. When we return, we talk to Commerce, Industry and Trade Minister Mangoba Kumalo. Don't go away. Watch local TV on the go with the Eswatini TV app for only 20 Emalangi. Come on. Do the most with Eswatini TV app. Download from Google Play Store or App Store. We're good together. Everywhere you go, MTN. Thirty minutes after seven. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. Now, the Commerce, Industry and Trade Minister, Mangoba Kumala, has articulated in numerous occasions a governmental policy encouraging foreign investment, exportation and industrialization as means to drive and sustain economic growth in the Kingdom of Eswatini. It is this very sentiment that saw the minister flying to reach economies where he presented six major projects with investment partnership potential worth over 60 billion in Malangin with potential to create 25,000 jobs in Aswatini as a means to resuscitate the kingdom's economy post-COVID-19. Honorable Minister Mangoba Kumalo joins me in studio this morning to unpack the investor vision in detail as well as other projects by his ministry. Uh, Mangoba Kumalo, Senator, uh, Honorable Minister, a very good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you, sir? I'm very well. Uh, thank you very much and a uh, very good morning to you. Happy to have you on the show today. You are a very, very busy man, and I say this because, you know, I've been trying to get you on the show since last year, and, uh, you know, only to be met with a busy schedule, and I'm not mad at that. In fact, I commend you for your resolute and unswerving commitment uh, for your job. I think, you know, that even though we have found ourselves in an unprecedented and turbulent time, you know, with uh, pandemic recovery, pandemic preparedness, um, civil unrest recovery, uh, Ukraine, Russia war, you name it. Uh, you, Minister Mangoba Kumala, have had an impressive record of service and just want to commend you for that. Um, Minister, you've spoken about six major projects as you are on your unwavering, ambitious economic uh, uh, drive. You know, I want you to talk to me about this development. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, first of all, thanks for the kind words. Um, I'm blessed uh, to work with a very good team um, in the Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Trade, uh, very dedicated professionals that have made it possible for us to uh, achieve some of the imperatives that uh, we wanted to 
um, in the quest of creating jobs in Eswatini. Yes, we have uh, we've had a very strong uh, vision uh, that says we want to uh, drive an export-led economy um, and uh, we also want to create uh, jobs to meet the uh, you know, uh, unemployment uh, a burden that uh, government is faced with, where suddenly government finds itself having to create government jobs, which is not sustainable. Yeah. Uh, but when private sector jobs are created, it makes uh, you know uh, the the burden on government a lot lighter. So we have we've been focusing intently on this, and we are looking at issues of import substitution and uh, self reliance. Uh, so the projects that. Um, we have uh, showcased uh, to the rest of the world in our uh, trips, uh, particularly with His Majesty's uh, international schedule, yeah. um, have been aimed at achieving, um, you know, these big uh, audacious goals. Uh, yeah. Even though we have had a post-economic recovery plan, where local investors in particular have been driving a lot of reinvestment and growth. Mm. Uh, we believe that um, when we focus on uh, these big projects, uh, we will survive uh, as a country and be self-sustaining as an economy. We have looked at a few of uh, the projects and they're mainly in the energy space because we know we are not self-reliant uh, on energy uh, and uh, we are looking to make sure that we have um, uh, projects uh, spread across all forms of energy, um, uh, renewable energy, that yeah. then give us uh, ultimately energy independence on the next, uh, uh, in the next six years. Um, we have also looked at projects in the logistics sector, uh, particularly the railway uh, projects where we have said if we connect our rail link with South Africa all the way to Mozambique and Richards Bay mm -hmm. and um, uh, maybe Durban, it will yeah. make our logistics a lot uh, better and there's uh, obvious opportunities um, here. We've also spoke, spoken about uh, projects in the tourism sector, uh, the f uh, game, big game park, big game park uh, yeah. project, um, and this is a project that is gaining uh, steam uh, fast, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're looking for international investors to help us uh, in this regard. Uh, we've also uh, spoken about uh, the big dam development down at Mpageni, mm -hmm. uh, what we call Mkondongwavuma Dam. Uh, that project is already fully funded, yeah. uh, but uh, we are then going to look at developing the, the town that's going to support all yeah. that development. You will see that in places like Spofaneni, we did not do that. Yes. And it has become a mess because as, uh, you know, Eastway and other organizations have grown the economy, uh, the town planning, the, the urban planning to support that yeah. hasn't uh, matched uh, our ambitions and we want to then get ahead of that. Yeah. Uh, these are some of the projects we've showcased, uh, but uh, there's, there's a couple of more. Yeah, projects, quite yeah. interesting projects that you mentioned, yes. Minister. But you, you've also touched on this very important one in terms of logistics. You know, it also relates to the SADC regional integration move. Uh, what is Eswatini doing to ensure that the commerce industry, in fact, commerce industry uh, ministry is doing to influence the improvement of the road infrastructure in Eswatini to promote trade and development? You know, it seems that, that they make an argument that there is no collaboration really, you know, uh, between uh, line ministries to promote trade, development and investment, yet the road infrastructure, I think last week we had uh, IPA and uh, they said we are the transit hub of, of, of logistics. That's true. Um, you know, if you look at Eswatini, we are a small country, we are a landlocked country. Um, we therefore need to create our own advantages uh, in terms of trade and uh, why should people uh, trade from Eswatini, particularly foreign direct investors, yeah. um, then we need to give them a reason to choose Eswatini. And one of those has to be efficiency in moving your goods uh, to other parts of yeah. Africa. Uh, as you know, I used to work for an organization that manufactured its products here and uh, we sold those products to 26 countries mm. across the continent. So I do yeah. have a first-hand experience yeah. in terms of some of the frustrations that uh, you encounter when you're trying to get uh, a container from Eswatini to the DRC or mm. a container from Eswatini to Nigeria. Um, uh, but what I like is, um, my view is this, uh, you know, perfect harmony 
right now within all the stakeholders in Eswatini, uh, particularly the Ministry of Home Affairs. Mm -hmm. uh, they've made it really easier to trade because, as you know yeah. now, Osho operates uh, 24 hours. Yeah. And we are talking to uh, see whether Lavumisa yeah. can also op operate 24 hours so yeah. that there's continuous movement of goods. Yeah. I've spoken about the rail link project. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, breakthroughs we've seen is um, the Ministry of Public Works working with um, uh, Eswatini Railways uh, as well as the Ministry of Home Affairs yeah. uh, engaging their counterparts in Mozambique to make sure that um, when our trains leave, uh, so for example, Stowotvo, all the way to Maputo, they don't stop at the border anymore. Yeah. So it is now very, f uh, you know, um, uh, free. So that is one of the reasons when you look at the World Bank is of doing business indicators, yeah. Eswatini ranks number one in trading across borders yeah. because that's one of the things we, we've created as a competitive advantage. Yeah, mm. and you know, to your point, I remember two years ago you did mention with another broadcast channel uh, that in, in the pipeline you do have plans to make sure that the borders work 24 hours and I'm happy that you know we're seeing that testament today. I want us to talk about factory shells. Uh, I know right. that you, you are very ambitious and you know un 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 unswerving and steady on your ambition to decentralize jobs. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about factory shells. I've seen mm. there's one in Kamula, there's another one in Shiselwen. I think in Gile, I'm going to go to Shiselwen. And I think Kassat, I'm going to go to Shiselwen. Yes, That's one that you yeah. resu resuscitated. Yeah. yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, you will recall that when His Majesty opened Parliament this year, he specifically uh, pointed out that uh, factory shells are, you know, central to economic uh, recovery and growth, yeah. and therefore challenged government to to uh, basically commission ten factories a year uh, mm. going forward because there has been a proven correlation between uh, industrial development, factory shell erection, uh, and job creation. Mm. This is, uh, you know, unequivocal. Um, in its uh, uh, success rate um, and uh, that is why you will see uh, when you look at uh, our economic growth figures GDP grew by 7.5% uh, last year uh, rather 7.4% according to the World Bank uh, which is the best in, 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 in our region uh, and that is underpinned by a 16% growth in industry, industry and manufacturing. Uh, so what mm. that means in short is the more we invest in factories and factory shells, the more we encourage the private sector to invest in factories yeah. and factory shells, um, uh, the more jobs we create and the faster our economy uh, will grow. So we do have a very strong pipeline of projects. Yeah. Uh, you've mentioned uh, three. Yeah. Uh, on top of the Kamula, uh, the one at uh, Jabula in Tlangano, the Johnson Workwear Factory, um, and the one we're resuscitating, uh, the cardboard uh, factory in Tlatikulu. Uh, we've got a, a few more projects. We will be um, uh, doing a project uh, in Nzevane, uh, mm. under Lubuli in Gundla. Mm. Uh, we are going to start this project in the next two months. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we already have people that are going to occupy this factory. Uh, we will be doing the same in the f in the, in a place called Mantamba. We've intentionally focused on the Lubombo Shiselo in the corridor because that is where uh, we have the highest rates of unemployment no, uh, at the moment. And uh, the bigger issue for us is we're decentralizing uh, manufacturing hubs uh, away from the commercial corridor uh, to um, uh, Tinkunlin. Yeah. I think in line with the kingdom's decentralization drive, that is very commendable. And I, I, I have a question, though. How far are we in terms of, you know, the implementation stages uh, with, with, with these uh, factory shells? Are we seeing you open one very soon? Um, the Gamula one okay. is going to be commissioned um, end of May. So beginning uh, June, we're expecting that okay. factory to go live. So that's actually exciting. Um, uh, the Johnson Workwear Factory has just... Um, uh, started uh, in terms of its construction and it's an 18 months project yeah uh, so it's going to be a staged uh, implementation plan we expect the Latikulu one uh, the one that we are refurbishing after yeah. um, you know being uh, you know affected by the unrest 
that one will be finished by December of 2023. 2023. Yes, so we do wow. have a steady, uh, you know, program that will bring these factories yeah. uh, into operation, um, you know, at a good rate. Yeah. And I know, you know, memorizing numbers is, is tricky because you work with, in such sure. a complex and extensive ministry. But do you have a ballpark estimate of how many jobs will be created out of these projects, these factory shells in particular? Well, yes, I do. Yeah. Because um, we, the Kamula one, a thousand jobs. Uh, the mm. Lunza Valley one, a thousand jobs. Mm. The Mandamba one, a thousand jobs. The Johnson Workwear one, um, about... Uh, uh, between 2.5 and 3,000, they keep changing the number, mm. but let's be conservative and say 2,000 jobs. Okay. So we're already seeing you know, 5,000 jobs. Mm. Uh, but uh, the Tlatukulu one, uh, the jobs were lost, we will reinstate those jobs as well, about uh, 500 jobs uh, odd. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and there's a few other projects that are happening in Matsapa as well. Uh, His Excellency the Prime Minister uh, was commissioning uh, one factory in Matsapa called yeah. Mtombo Wupila and they're going to be employing close to 100 people, etc. So yeah. our ballpark figure is the factory shell program is going to give us about 6,000 jobs. Yeah. Uh, the committed projects as we stand here. Yeah. As, yeah. You, as, you, as you just mentioned, Matap, I'm reminded of another project. I think it's called Invet Eswatin. It should be a sugar yes. syrup manufacturing yes. Uh, yes. company that you were opening, I think, last year, late last year. I'm not too sure. You'll remind me. But, you know, these investments certainly do not fly under the radar. There's Kellogg's, there's the Nguenya hair plant, yes. uh, there's uh, what else? The factory shells, to name but a few. Uh, I want us to talk about SMEs now, Honorable Minister. In, in the last three to five years, what has been the trend in exports by you know SMEs, excluding corporates that have been export oriented for years? Is there significant growth in SME-led exports? Unfortunately, no. Um, we have worked really hard to maximize the trade agreements that we have. Yeah. So EPA um, does a lot of good work uh, exposing um, our SMEs to the markets where we have trade agreements. Yeah. But you'll recall that in 2020, uh, as we thought we were gaining momentum, yeah. COVID hit us, uh, basically stopped a lot of those programs dead in their tracks. And then thereafter we had to contend with uh, the unrest. Um, so that hasn't really... Uh, been, uh, you know, uh, our best uh, performing uh, sort of segment yeah. of the yeah. economy because of those two factors. But uh, we are, again, uh, you know, recalibrating and starting to say now the worst is behind us. How do we regain momentum yeah. and start, um, you know, uh, exporting uh, to international markets, particularly using the AFCFTA Mm. Um, you know, as as a conduit. So very soon, I will be commissioning uh, the AFCFTA implementation plan. Okay. Uh, because with the assistance of uh, UNECA, um, a UN agency, we have uh, engaged a consultant who's going to help us to see how our SMEs mm. will be able to uh, take advantage of the African market, which will in turn. Uh, open doors for uh, the international market at large. Yeah. Speaking of the AFCFTA, you know, the African continent, I was actually shocked to learn this. You know, in as much as it is working hard at increasing intra African trade, which is, by the way, is, is not good at all, I was shocked to learn that it is it has the lowest levels of trade within a continent that exists worldwide. That 17 percent. That was very shocking to learn. 17 percent. Yeah. But how is Eswatini positioning itself to be a benefiting participant of the AFCFTA, you know, infrastructure development of appropriate payment systems, you, you name it. Yeah. yeah. So first of all, um, it has been that implementation plan. So when that implementation plan is uh, presented to the public, it will flesh out uh, the different elements of successful trade and state what we need to do. So uh, without preempting that report, I believe we are going to be talking about things like access to finance, yeah. things like uh, capacity building, um, uh, and uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, logistics, uh, yeah. and how do we make sure that goods uh, get from here to wherever they need to be. But I want to specifically zone in on uh, e-commerce. I think yeah. the one thing that Emaswati should be looking at, uh, you know, quite intently is e-commerce as a platform 
to showcase what they produce and what they make and what they mm. trade um, and connect it with the rest of Africa. Yeah. Um, he, His Majesty uh, has been one of the people spearheading the AE trade uh, groups, uh, you know, set up in Africa to support the AFCFTA. They've now opened another office in Rwanda and mm -hmm. they continue to be opening other offices. Uh, but Emaswati uh, will benefit from that platform uh, yeah. to showcase what they have across the continent. So my, my strong answer is we need to focus on e-commerce. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to e-commerce just briefly. Okay. And I, I like how you, you, you ducked my setup there to preempt, you know, the, the, the <laughs> report. I have this interesting question from a good friend, Tembela Msibi. She is, um, I'm sure you know her. She's the vice chairperson of the AFCFTA Youth Advisory Council. Yes. Um, just a young, gracious uh, lady. She says she'd like to know what your plans for youth and women are. And this might, again, be a setup to preempt your report. What, what are the targeted policies and interventions specifically intended to integrate women and the youth into the formal economy? Absolutely. I mean, it's a great question. And by the way, she's doing a fantastic job. Yeah, she's amazing. Uh, she, she's a fantastic ambassador for the country. Yeah. I've heard her speak. And I've, uh, she, I mean, her reputation precedes her. So That's she's, all, she's yeah. fantastic. But be that as it may, I want to spoke, speak about something that I'd like all the young people and women entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs yeah. to really assist me with here. We have tabled a bill in Parliament. Mm. It is called the Citizens Economic Empowerment Bill. The bill seeks to say the country currently has a suite of incentives for foreign direct investors, but it is unclear what incentives exist mm. for locals. It is unclear what incentives exist for youth. Yeah. It is unclear what incentives exist for women. So this bill uh, is a bill that is going to establish what we are going to call a Citizens Economic Empowerment Council. Mm. And this council, the bill states clearly, will decide what incentives young people uh, will need to have. So for example, the bill will speak to things like in procurement, government and parastatal procurement, what is the quota of young people yeah. Uh, that uh, young people uh, by value that will be actually uh, mm. preserved and uh, women etc so I would like for all these uh, interest groups to really push their MPs uh, yeah. and the senators to approve this before the end of June this year before the end of June this year it has to Oh, it's, a, it's a very consequential They are bill. watching. They can hear you <laughs> compelling them. And uh, they, yeah. they better make sure to, 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 to listen to what you're saying, Honorable Minister. Sure. I think, lastly, uh, I'm very interested, uh, you know, the, uh, the African continent, we, is it the Agora? Let me just try to remember correctly because I don't want to mess this up. Sure. Um, yeah. Progress with the interventions targeting the removal of uh, technical barriers such as not having a trade hub run by SMEs to trade. Mm. Yeah, can you speak on that? Um, I think we had a good meeting last week with the new chairperson and the board at SETCO, mm. Swatini, uh, sorry, a small enterprise development corporation in Swatini. Mm. Um, one of the challenges I gave them was exactly this, to mm. say what I'm hearing from Maswati five years into the job and almost done with my term um, is that we've got a very disaggregated, um, you know, uh, intervention, set of interventions. And, um, you know, it, it is a little bit all over the show. And mm. it, do, it does need one central hub where people can walk into yeah, yeah. and they will get great advice and hand holding and yeah. direct uh, direction to the relevant entity that's going to help them so that people are not hopping from one place to another yeah. and uh, two years into trying to start a business they discover that they did not uh, go to the right entity so i've challenged setco to be that hub mm. uh, to be that trade hub 
um, that will, you will go into this entity and they will then pull everything together, whether it is finance yeah. that you need, whether it's an incubation program, whether it is a market um, access that yeah. you need. Uh, so is this something that I think as we reinvigorate uh, SETCO, uh, people are going to see a different um, okay. service offering from them. Looking forward to that development. Minister, I think this, this should be my parting question. Um, AGOA, it has been, you know, in existence for, for several years sure. and has really been of great benefit to many participating countries mm -hmm. by allowing them to trade. Mm -hmm. um, we know that it, it has allowed them to trade without heavy tariffs. I think it's important that we sure. know that, yes. which is excellent. It is up for review next year. Um, we, I think South Africa is going to be hosting that forum. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you hoping will come out of that, you know, forum? An extension of the act, maybe? Um, my expectation is that, um, you know, AGOA is going to come to an end in 2025 mm. uh, as a policy position in the U.S. Um, last year, um, the Prime Minister and I attended um, the U.S.-Africa Summit. Uh, I think it was late in the year, November. Uh, or early December, I don't remember quite clearly. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that we benefited from was an engagement with uh, members of Congress. Yeah. There were 10 of them uh, as African uh, leaders. Yeah. And uh, it is clear that they, they don't really have an intention of continuing with AGOA post-2025. Yeah. However, they will still uh, work bilaterally to make sure that the benefits that we have as right. African countries are not lost. So we are hopeful that um, uh, the benefits that uh, accrue to us due to AGOA will not be uh, forfeited uh, post-2025. Yeah. Honorable Minister, your, your five-year term, like I said when I, when I introduced you, has been met with a turbulent time. Right. But you, you've been able to, to respond, you know, in a such a, a commendable way. Uh, I thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I think I have exhausted all my questions, but I do want to ask, I'm just reminded, you, you mentioned on your investor drive um, yeah. six major projects. Just right. highlight those a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, number one, uh, it is the energy projects. We want to be self-reliant on energy. Mm. Uh, number two, it is the big five. Uh, basically uh, tourism uh, related projects uh, that uh, want to have a, a, a an offering that will compete with the likes of Kruger National Park in Eswatini. Uh, that's number two. Number three, it is the Mbageni uh, project where we are looking for an urban development uh, solution around the Mkondongwavoma development. Um, in, in that uh, particular uh, area. Number four, um, it is the rail, uh, the rail link project. Mm -hmm. We are looking to connect our rail from South Africa through Lohia to Eswatini and all the way to our uh, various ports. And then uh, number five, we want to complete the, the big hotel. Um, uh, we need an operator for the hotel and uh, we need to ensure that we find a, a strategic partner um, uh, for that hotel and we believe strongly that yeah. this will be one of the uh, big projects that will um, you know, uh, make us uh, successful. And then lastly, it is this whole idea of industrial development where we're looking for um, you know, factory shells in industrial parks yeah. uh, because, as His Majesty said, it is going to underpin our economic uh, growth as well. Yeah, and as you mentioned, the number of jobs that are being created through the factory shells it certainly will underpin our economic growth. And, you know, it being out there, um, you know, Lema Pandlen, I think, good looking uh, with regards to that. Honorable Minister, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the time, and I want to thank you and uh, the media in general for the role they play in making sure that our people are adequately informed. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm. Well, our Commerce, Industry and Trade Minister, Senator Mangoba Kumalo, just, you know, giving us an overview of what the country is looking like with regards to trade, industrialization, uh, you know, which trickles down to job creation as well, as well as all the other projects.
projects that are under his ministry. Uh, we thank him so much. And, you know, as he's nearing the end of his term in the Commerce, Industry and Trade Ministry, we cannot help but, you know, clap hands for the job that he has done, especially uh, considering the turbulent times that he was met with. 57 minutes after 7. Let's take a quick ad break. When we come back, we wrap up the show. Just a minute before 8 a.m. That means we've come to the end of our program today, but we have uh, had an exciting show again today. Uh, just to reflect a little bit, we had Tembingosi Dube, local economist, giving us an economic outlook of the country, particularly looking at the monetary policy statement that was presented by Dr. Philip Nisi last week. We also talked about the post-budget seminar that happened uh, last week with the Ministry of Finance, presented by uh, Mr. Minister Neil Reichenberg. Uh, we also had, we just had uh, Minister Mangoba Kumal, who is the Commerce, Industry and Trade Minister, who also told us about uh, some of the big investments that his ministry has been able to commission. Uh, we've come to the end of our program. Thank you for staying with us. Let's meet again tomorrow as we look at health issues. Bye-bye. <laughs>